studies on what's coming. In this study, Dr. Oliver discusses what's coming. Using many scripture references from the New Testament, Dr. Oliver prepares the church for the coming persecution. As we are reminded, persecution is coming and with a speed few people could have imagined. We, as the church must be prepared. What's coming? Matthew chapter 5 verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Introduction. This month hosts two significant events, one, the most important election in U.S. history and top Thanksgiving. In many ways. These two events are interwoven because those who came across the waters from England and other European countries came to America for the ability to govern themselves and to hold fast to biblical teachings. From them came our celebration of Thanksgiving and the rudiments of the Constitution. Their first Thanksgiving was truly a time of reflection on the mercy and grace of God. They humbly gathered together with the native Indians and celebrated the goodness of their Heavenly Father. They birthed a nation that reflected the principles and values of Christianity and prospered because of it. But now, the persecution by religion and government from which they fled has surfaced with vehemency to once again restrict freedom and persecute the ancestors of those colonists. There being one difference, there is no place to flee, leaving only one alternative to stand and to face persecution. We should hold fast to Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 and realize Jesus faced these same adversaries. It was the religious zealots who cried crucify him and depended on a salacious Roman government to carry out their wishes. John chapter 15 verses 18 through 25. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin, but now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. New King James Version Persecution is coming and with a speed few people could have imagined. Matthew 5 11-12 Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. New King James Version Regardless of the varying eschatological views on this next passage, it has relevance today, judging from the current world condition. Matthew chapter 24 verses 20 through 22. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake those days will be shortened. New King James Version Thank God for being the elect, who are to be delivered from horrendous persecution. The briefest study in the book of Acts will reveal the constant presence of persecution among those of the early church. The question arises when we seek the power of that early body, does it come with persecution? 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble, with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God.
The slightest study of Paul's writing includes multiple occasions of persecution. Paul even declared that ministry is accompanied and enhanced by tribulation. The awful treatment of pastors in Canada and the U.S. proves this truth. Acts chapter 5 verses 17 through 21. Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out, and said, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early. Acts chapter 8 verses 1 and 2. At that time a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, and made great lamentation over him. Paul again explains the power witness of chains. Philippians chapter 1 verses 12 through 14. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard, and to all the rest, that my chains are in Christ, and most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Paul associated true ministry with persecution on several occasions, none more flagrant than in this passage. What did Paul learn from this persecution? Two things happened, one, the palace guard had a witness of Christ before them and took those commissioned to preach gained boldness when they beheld the steadfastness of Paul. Look now at these next passages which show the fruits of ministry in adverse times. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 3 through 10. We give no offense in anything, that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love. By the word of truth, by the power of God by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers, and yet true, as unknown, and yet well known, as dying, and behold we live, as chastened, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Acknowledging his dire circumstances as current events in his life, Paul describes, below, what it takes to be a missionary of the gospel. If one reads about the lives of those who have pioneered in the faith, every aspect of the following description is evident. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 11-13 through 13. To the present hour will both hunger and thirst, and we are poorly clothed, and beaten, and homeless and we labor, working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we endure, being defamed, we entreat. We have been made as the filth of the world, the offscouring of all things until now. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 32 through 38. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, 
38 of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. Are we somehow better than these? Has our civilization removed us from the docket of persecution? I think not. Already, on many fronts, it has begun, and it is picking up speed in many places on earth, including the U.S. Romans chapter 5 verses 3 through 5. But we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Is it the will of God for saints to endure tribulation? Paul's letter to the Thessalonians answers this question. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. Therefore, when we could no longer endure it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith, that no one should be shaken by these afflictions, for you yourselves know that we are appointed to this. For, in fact, we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation, just as it happened, and you know. For this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to know your faith lest by some means the tempter had tempted you, and our labor might be in vain. Jesus was appointed to suffer the pangs of tribulation to accomplish our redemption. Paul was appointed for this treatment. Acts chapter 2 verses 22 through 24 Men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, him, being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified, and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Christianity light fades quickly during the likes of these conditions. Revelation chapter 2 verses 8 through 11. These things says the first and the last, who was dead, and came to life, I know your works, tribulation, and poverty, but you are rich, and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Couple this passage with the following word by Paul. Romans chapter 8 verses 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written. For your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. These encouraging words were attested in the lives of the apostles and the saints throughout history. It didn't matter that Inquisition, Fox's Book of Martyrs, pillaged and plundered, leaving the path of believers' blood by the sword of the Catholic Church. It doesn't matter that Islamic countries cut off hands feet and arms in order to inflict maximum pain on Christians, for these Christians are honored by Jesus. Revelation chapter 6 verse 9 through 11. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, 
O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth. Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer, until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was completed. Those words came from the pen of John who understood persecution. Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. What will be your testimony when the time comes? This concludes the study by Dr. C. R. Oliver on what's coming. We pray that it has been a blessing to you and that it has expanded your understanding and appreciation for the Lord's presence as we face the coming persecution.